Hello. Um, thank you, Orin, for agreeing to come and spend the time with us here today. Um, can you tell me again when do you fly? Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. Yeah. Um, so Owen came in this morning and he spent the day here in the community with us. He came from Chicago. Michigan, Detroit. Detroit. Yeah. Um, Plane was stuck in Chicago. <laughs> oh, you got stuck in Chicago. Yeah. So um, we met Owen a few months ago yeah. when we went to the conference and he presented a very nice product and I was very excited about it and I asked him to come in to share his knowledge and the product with us. Ms. Linus, we work together in the Eat Well Committee, which is basically a subcommittee of the dining committee. And we try to find solutions for the vegetarians and the flexitarians of our community. So I worked with her to put this together. Um, I also asked her to be part of this interview. So Owen can tell us a little bit more about the product. And we have here our superstar, Adam. So Adam can also share yeah. how we foresee <clears throat> us using this product in our menu. That's great. Thank you, Owen. Thank you. Um, so first, thank you for again for having us here. Um, it's, it's very rare, as I share with you today, that I get to present to the end user. I, it's a very rare opportunity and it's kind of, it's fun. And um, I actually had some of the most challenging questions I think I've had in a long, long time, but it's, but it's not, a, you get a different point of view when you're talking to the person that's actually consuming the food. And so, um, as I was sharing two years ago, we, um, we were lucky enough, we were at an industrial ingredient show and um, some of the challenges that we, we, we've been struggling with in healthcare is that there's a big initiative to go plant-based at some level, not even vegan, but in introducing plant-based ingredients into acute care for patient feeding because they're trying to lower sodium, lower fat, um, and kind of go clean ingredient deck, um, all natural. And so we've been searching for a product for some time, I wouldn't say almost four and a half years. And one of our buyers went to an industrial ingredient show and she um, had the chance to see the company that they were just launching after they got their funding. And uh, when she found out that it wasn't a product and that the price point, which is one of the challenges with plant-based ingredients was under $2 a pound after you do everything. She didn't get into the details with me about rehydration, but she said the finished cost, and it's a bakery term, bowl costs, she goes, we'll be under two dollars a pound. I said, all right, get me the information. I want to see the specs. And then what I'd like to do is get this actually in front of some of the dietitians that I work with in acute care, because they're, they're a better filter than actually I am. I, I want to begin with the end in mind. If, it, if it's not going to make sense, I don't want to spend a lot of time investing in it. And we put it in front of um, Northern Lights Health, which is a health system in Maine. And we put it in front of um, Centra Health in Lynchburg, Virginia. Um, and the dietitians both were really intrigued. And they said, how will it end up tasting? I said, well, that's a great question. I don't know yet, but um, if the nutritionals meet your criteria, I'll bring it in. We'll have our corporate chef start working with applications with the company. And long story short, um, when we sat down with them, what really fascinated me immediately was that it wasn't a replacement where we're basically having to have a narrative why you're eating something that doesn't taste like it's supposed to taste. The, the company presented it to us as an ingredient to be incorporated into recipes and more wasn't really talking about vegan applications, it was really talking more about flexitarian, not from the flexitarian diet point of view, but as a way to, again, the two key things in acute care is sodium and fat. Those, that's the starting point. And then right behind that is what I call one or two B is the allergens. And so they were all pretty excited because pea protein doesn't fall on their allergen <laughs> list. There is some allergens, there's an allergen associated with every food, but it's not predominant. And so we took it in and then we started to play with the applications. And the way the company presented it to us, which is really neat for a chef, they said, how, take recipes that you currently use, and then they gave us some referen references, like substitute some of the protein out, and then just taste it, do a control where you're 
make a regular hamburger, I'll use a hamburger as an example, and then go 60-40 and then put them side by side. And then put it into sauces like bolognese sauce or a spaghetti sauce, um, chili, um, Mexican applications. Speaking with the chili that yep. we tasted yes. also. Yes. It, that's the one that I tasted and I couldn't tell that it was snobby. It, it's, I'm going to say this to you and we presented it to the chefs. So when we got through the filter with the military, with the dietitians, and they approved us, we met with two of their, I don't want to call it corporate chefs because they don't use that term in the military, but they have regional chefs. They got excited that we weren't telling them to use our recipe. They were saying, how do they use it in their recipes? And I think that's the intriguing part. Our, our recommendation when we sit down with someone who's interested in using it is take your own recipes. And then you apply it how you, where you see it fit. So if vegan is something that's important for you, um, lettuce wraps, so, uh, like bolognese sauce, um, that's a good place to start. If you're trying to reduce fat and sodium, putting it into replacing a portion of your ground protein or your ground turkey or your ground chicken, your ground, whatever it is, or in a soup, um, we've made Asian soups with the larger crumble where we swapped out the tofu for the pea protein. And that's what I was sharing with Ms. Linus, that to me it was very interesting because it's an item that you can convert yes. and basically um, make so many other options just with one item. Yes. Like, kind of like tofu yes. that basically you can dress and it will absorb the flavor yes. of anything that you mix it with. Yes. But it's more versatile than tofu <clears throat> because yes. there's so much more that you can do with it. And that's why I really like the product. It's more versatile because a tofu has soy, you know, you have tempeh, which has wheat, yes. gluten. This yes. one is just, just the peas, right? Yeah, just and the that's peas. it. Yeah, it's yeah. one ingredient. Um, this is good for, for everyone here to hear. So Gordon Food Service, their healthcare division, um, they, their dietitians actually write recipes for their, their customers. And so they saw this at one of the shows we were at. And so they gave us a, um, a test. They gave us their entire recipes that the dietitians write out for their customers. And we took their sloppy Joe recipe and their meatloaf recipe. We made a control with their recipe the way it is. And then they wanted us to start at 50%. So we just literally sent this out last week so their diet, they're doing a tasting actually like sometime today, um, they're gonna compare the two. Um, we have a presentation to the US Navy. This was a little bit harder than what Gordon Food Service did. They gave us, it's the ARCF. What that really means is that's, that's their recipe book and operational procedures for every recipe that the US Navy produces. It's 2,200 pages long. Wow. They said pick four recipes, I, I spent probably 20 minutes until I found on the PDF document, the search bar, and I said, bolognese sauce, <laughs> chili con carne, um, waffles, pancakes. So we took recipes that they're doing, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a control using their recipe, and then we're gonna swap out 20 to 30%. That's where we're starting with this. And that our presentation will be their recipes with pea protein. What is one of the biggest um facilities that are using your product or customers, I would say. So it's a branding product for us. We've been presenting, we started actually presenting this once we worked out all the particulars so we were educated. And so we started this um, off, the first show was the military show. So the, we, we've gotten, um, we've been approved by every branch of the military with the dietitians. Awesome. And so they have, for the army, it's called um, JACO, which is basically the purchasing arm for the mm -hmm. army. Natick is the other division, and then we're right now in front of the Navy. And I'm not delusional. I, I, I've dealt with, we do a lot of work with FEMA. And so normally to get onto the menus and get by the dietitians and the chefs, it's a year process. We're, we're probably being fast-tracked. We will be FEMA ready within the next probably 47 days. Awesome. Because we're actually working with their MRE meal suppliers. We just presented to- and that is the dehydrated that's the de item. Well, it's, it's shelf stable. So mm -hmm. when they send their folks out into the field, they have no refrigeration mm -hmm. and it's got to have a two year shelf life and it's their, it's their suppliers, their recipes. So it's so interesting that you mentioned that part of our emergency food that yeah. we have 
as per regulation, we need to have three days worth of emergency food yep. for healthcare. It's actually a dehydrated product. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's good for 10 years. Yep, it's a, it, it's, it's a pretty cool program. So some of the other folks that, on Central Health right now, we're working with them in US Foods. Um, <clears throat> Wexner Health, which is Ohio State's health system. Um, it's a teaching hospital and they've got, I think, five facilities. Um, we're setting up with U.S. Foods. Their, their, their cook chill operation is now projecting that they're going to use, just with that one facility, about 7,000 pounds a year. Awesome. And it's, a, it's a teaching hospital, awesome. so they have a lot yeah. of people. Um, we are presenting at the ACFP, which is the dietitian show in Scottsdale in two weeks. In Arizona. In Arizona. Um, we're showing it at the AHF conference, which is Self-Op Healthcare. That's in August. Um, we're showing it at NACUS for colleges and universities. We're, we've gotten, we, we've got cuttings. I'll be on the road for probably the next 14 weeks. Okay. Is this for our audience? Is this pea protein made from the green peas that people are used to eating? It's, it's actually yellow pea. I, it took me a little while because I'm used to eating what, the only peas I've ever eaten are, are green peas. It is a yellow pea I, and I can get you the exact scientific right because I have that in, on my computer um, but it, all so it's made from a, a, something like a split pea I think yes okay yes. so it's a yellow split pea very good okay very good, <laughs> very good. <laughs> and is this a complete protein the answer is no it, it uh, and I'm, that was one of the I think maybe even you brought that up so I have I have it here so it's this is um, we have to supply this which is another new term I've learned it's the PDCAAS score. And so what PDCAAS stands for, um, it is the Protein Digestibility Corrected Amino Acid Scores. And so to be a complete protein, it has to have every one of these amino acids. How many? Um, and it's, tw I believe 20, if I, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So there's 20. So the only, the only amino acids were, which doesn't make it a complete protein, they just don't carry a high enough level, is lysine, and you're gonna have to help me with this Lysine. one. Thank you. I always, <laughs> I always screw that one up. And what um, Charlene from the, Mil the Marine Corps said was the recipes where they use brown rice, when you combine brown rice right. with this, it becomes a complete protein. And this would be like most legumes, so it's not Correct. that it's different from any other legume. Correct, correct. Right. And, and if you, and I'll leave this with you guys, it scores high compared to oats, um, wheat, hemp, um, soy, um, potato, whey. Um, it, it'll score almost identically. And so I'm figuring that the military asked me this, I've now kept this because I learned a new term. Right, and that would be something when you make a product, you might make its companion be rice that mm -hmm. night if it has yeah, something yeah. with it. Um, can you tell us a little about the sustainability of this uh, product? Chef, that, that is great. So um, being it's a plant-based product, um, and when you think, and somebody brought that up with the meat, I think that nice lady at the end. So if you think about how much carbon, CO2 is getting into the <clears throat> air with plant, not plant, animal feces, I, I don't know any other way, to, I don't know what the nice way to say that animals give off a lot in their manure, right? Mm -hmm. The beautiful part about replacing the pea protein is number one, we're not putting CO2 into the atmosphere and depleting our ozone. Number two is you don't need a lot of water for, uh, to grow peas versus you're feeding a lot of water to any type of animal. Um, and you, you're not destroying the ground because after they basically plow under, when, after they pull the peas off the plants, you're ref naturally refertilizing the soil. Is this anything like uh, there's a lot of additives in it? I mean, it's not a replacement like sure. that. So, great, another great question. It is one ingredient. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's texturized pea protein, and literally, as I explained to somebody, they asked the question earlier. When they basically harvest the peas, it's run through a bear a, a band dryer, um, which is just nothing more than a giant tunnel, um, and they're throwing hot air on it just to dehydrate it. So it's, our, it's a natural product correct. versus a contrived product correct. with a lot of additives. Correct, correct. Good. Do you have any other questions? Uh, what is the calorie count and so forth protein in the product? So 
before when it's it's in its shelf staples um, in the dehydrated form, it's 110 calories for about 28 grams or one ounce. Mm -hmm. And you're typically rehydrating the pea protein at two parts pea protein, one part water. What's really neat for the chef is that when you apply water to it, it will multiply in volume 5.33 times. Mm -hmm. And so, um, for example, an 8.82 pound of the smaller crumble, 8.82 pound bag, when you apply the water in that ratio, mm -hmm. is the equivalent of 46.7 pounds of ground beef or ground mm -hmm. chicken. So literally you're not using what the same weight in the recipe, mm -hmm. you're, you're using volume because it just expands. And the protein level in the dry version of this is 20 grams. Mm -hmm. So if you were adding, for example, let's call it one ounce of the pea protein and you're putting in a half ounce of water, you've just added 20 grams of protein. Mm -hmm. And so what, what I think is important for what we've seen with other senior living systems that we're presenting to as we speak, they've ch challenged us that one of the challenges they don't get, a lot of the folks in the, in the communities don't get enough calories and, by, and they don't get enough protein. So what they were intrigued with is not so much the flexitarian side as the fortification side, mm -hmm. where they could take a biscuit, they could take their pancakes, their waffles, muffins, um, even pound cake and insert the product because it's got no flavor profile and it's not affecting the moisture in the recipe either because of the water in it. It'll actually hold. So you should come out with almost the same, like few minute pound cake side by side and you add it at 20% batter weight. You'll have almost taste wise the identical taste, mm -hmm. but you'll have fortified the product with upwards of five to 10% more protein. Right, and this would up the protein in some of our vegetarian entrees. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think it will add more uh, freedom yeah. to your creativity yeah. because now you can do more. It's a versatile product and like uh, Ms. Langhaus alluded to earlier, it's not a contrived product that has all sorts of additives. Yeah, right. It's just straight up peas, yeah. pea protein, so yeah. you don't have to worry about MSG or lots of sodium or anything like that to mimic a, a meat product. So. Yeah. It's going to be uh, fun to use. You know, the other thing which somebody mentioned, and we have so many different audiences that we're speaking to right now, but um, the company, before they went to market, they went the extra distance. So it's considered gluten-free. It's OU certified. So for that audience of specialty religious diets, it meets, and OU is probably one of the more respected um, Jewish certifications. Uh, it's certified non-GMO. And so for vegans, GMO is a, is a hot button. We hear that very often. In fact, um, when the company presented this for their retail side to Whole Foods, that was, that was at the top of their list. And they had to actually go back um, for that certification. It's certified plant-based. It's certified soy-free. It's certified vegan. Um, and then for the Muslim population, it's certified halal. So it's, it, it, it speaks to a pretty significant audience. Um, it could be used. It could be used vegan. It could be used. It could be used as flexitarian. It could be used to um, basically reduce fat in a recipe. And again, just I, I, this is a very unique thing for our company. We don't normally sell ingredients. We're selling a finished product. Mm -hmm. And so, this is in my 11 years the first time where I can say, if the chef likes it and Chef Laura is saying, take your recipes you play with it. I'll get you samples. You play with it. And when you're happy with the recipe, it's your recipe. Correct. What I like about the, the, the product as well <clears throat> is the storage. Um, because we don't have a lot of freezer space here yeah. and a lot of refrigerated space. Yeah. So the, it comes in a very small package. So it's easier for us to always have it available because it doesn't require a lot of space. It's, a, it's in its dehydrated form. It's got a two year shelf life. Um, and, and it makes it easy. We started the program off with a lot of senior living facilities around the United States have very small freezers yeah. and walk-ins. And so the first in initiation of the program, we were actually FedExing one bag at a time. Yeah. Because that's a 8.82 pounds, you, the equivalent of 46 pounds of ground beef, that's a week's worth of product for somebody. Correct. So, so being able to ship it anywhere in the U.S. and we're working with U.S. Foods and Cisco, not Cisco, U.S. Foods and Gordon Foods. They have an online, they call it an EPO, mm -hmm. Extended Product Offering. And again, we're doing this 
just to start the program off so that we're FedExing it around the country. Yeah, it's um to me that that was also a big deal because we are able to always have it available. Yes. Are you making the product or distributing? We're just distributing. You're just distributing. Yeah. Okay. The, the unique, uh, we caught the company just out of their funding. I, they've got they've got three venture capital firms that put close to three hundred million dollars into this company, and they were actually at the show just kind of exploring the institutional side and mm -hmm. we literally stumbled on them. And so they really weren't with it. Most of the distributors they were interested in selling to um, don't really work the way they had it in their mind. So normally Cisco, US Foods, and um, there's another company called DMA, which is an aggregate of, of regional distributors. You can't go and sell them anything. You have to actually go to the compasses, the Aramarks and the Sodexos and users once they agree to use it, they're more interested in having customers attached. These, these distributors don't sell anything. So what we share with them, we have relationships with some pretty scale companies and we, we're lucky enough to get in front of folks like yourself and then it grows into the mothership. In, in this case, Morrison's. We're already in discussions with another part of, part of Compass U.S. on this. If it grows into this, you get your you get to the Cisco's okay. and the U.S. Foods. Okay. Do you have another question? No, I think that's it. Good. Um, thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. Again, I know that you had a rough day yesterday. <laughs> he spent the whole day um, yeah, right. at the airport. Him is four flight. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you know, COVID has presented challenge, new challenges as we're coming out of the supply chain. But yesterday it was my first experience, and I travel a lot. Um, they had a mechanical issue in Chicago, and they couldn't f fix the engine. It took them five hours. They got the plane in the air, which is an hour flight from Chicago to Detroit. And then the same issue occurred in Detroit. And at 4.20 in the afternoon, they made the announcement, well, we're canceling the flight. And so I got on the phone with, I, with the woman from Delta. She goes, Mr. Stern, you're so calm about this. I said, or I think her name was Barb. I said, Barb, I don't, I don't, I'm not the pilot. I'm not the mechanic. I, all I am is a passenger. I go when you go or I sit when, it, when you tell me to sit. She goes, you're so understanding. I said, there's nothing I could do when I'm not, I wanna see my grandkids. I'm not having a heart attack over this. If, if, if tomorrow morning they say you get me out at seven, which they did, I woke up at three o'clock in the morning this morning, which is not a problem for me because I'm an early bird. Uh, and it worked out and I got, the, this was cool. I, honest to goodness, tonight when I go to sleep, there'll be a giant, so I don't get to present to the customers. Mm -hmm. I don't get to see the questions that, like this is the questions I should be getting and it's kind of fun. But we appreciate it. Oh, thank you. You're and thank, Adam, thank you Absolutely. to your whole team. Yeah. Wonderful hospitality. They made, made our jobs really easy today and you helped us. Normally, we don't ask our customers to help prepare for us because we'll get in there early, but you guys are gems. Sure, absolutely. Thanks, Thanks for coming by. Yeah, all good.